Hello everyone, welcome to Indian School of Physics. Guys, this is Nitin here. So I gave this problem uh, two days back, and it is uh, an original problem. It's from by me. So yeah, many people uh, give wrong answer in this. So let's discuss the concept and the application part and the key areas where uh, why this problem was special. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I'll read the problem statement. There exists uh, an electric field. And its expression is given alpha times xi plus yj plus zk divided by x square plus y square plus z square uh, to the power 3 by 2 in space. And uh, it is given that flux through curved surface of paraboloid and uh, code is phi 1 and phi 2. So there exists a paraboloid and its uh, vertex is at uh, origin. And similarly, at some distance L, uh, there is a cone and uh, they are asking us that uh, flux through this curved surface is phi 1 and flux through the curved surface of uh, cone is phi 2 so phi 1 by phi 2 we need to calculate in this uh, particular problem and uh, we have to use uh, h equal to l equal to r for a better answer now many students made mistake in this so let's uh, discuss this uh, problem so first thing most of you were able to understand uh, that this uh, electric field resembles the field of a point charge when we break it like this so this becomes uh, r cap and this becomes r square so it is like uh, alpha by r square times r cap it's a radial field in 3d and uh, we can compare it with the point charge where it expression was kq by r square times r cap and here it is alpha by r square so we know the value of q as 4 pi epsilon not alpha all right and uh, here you can see clearly uh, so since it is resembling the field of a point charge we can treat this problem as as if here at this point there is a point charge placed all right now cone is completely out of this there is no charge so net flux through the cone is going to be zero whereas uh, similar logic we will apply for uh, uh, for paraboloid but you can see as I'm increasing uh, the charge uh, size of this charge, you see some part of the some part of the charge is inside this paraboloid. So I can say for uh, especially for a point charge, you can say for a point charge here, this is going to be half of the charge which is going to be present inside, and this is the key step where most of the students have made mistake. So let's proceed here. Now for cone, I can say this phi 2 and this phi circle, these two combined, uh, here you can see this is positive and this should be negative in this case because field is this side and area vector is perpendicular to this. So negative, I can say phi 2 plus phi circle is equal to Q inside by epsilon naught. So where there is no charge here, so total is 0. So phi 2 directly we are getting minus Q by 2 epsilon naught. 1 minus cos theta cos theta you can see here this is uh, 2l or 2h and this is uh, uh, r so this is root 5 r so cos theta is uh, 2 by root 5 so we are writing this substituting it here we know the value of phi 2 now main part is in the parabola so this is the key step I, as i said so here also phi circle plus phi curved and that is equal to charge inside by epsilon naught. The smaller the charge is, we can assume almost half of the charge will be present inside. Half of the charge is going to be present inside. You can see this. The tangent uh, at this point is vertical. So it is going to uh, take half of the part of that sphere. Smaller the size, you can say almost half uh, will be present here. So I can write this phi 1 plus phi circle is equal to q by 2 epsilon naught. And this time here r and h are equal. So this angle is 45 degree. So phi 1 is q by 2 epsilon naught 1 minus cos theta. Cos theta is cos 45 1 by root 5. If you simplify phi 1 you are going to get as uh, uh, q by 2 root 2 epsilon naught. Phi 2 was negative and uh, phi 1 is uh, positive when we take the ratio and simplify we are going to get a negative number and it is coming as root 5 minus root 5 pi root 2 times root 5 minus 2 and it's a 
very nice answer i can give this answer as uh, the ans uh, that answer is of the form of a by b root a minus b so i can ask you a plus b in integer form or a minus b in integer form so like this they can ask this question it's a very uh, simple not very tough uh, but uh, poly conceptual question you can say multiple approaches it is taking it's on the easier side in my opinion but still many many students made mistake but there is there was a good chunk of student who could uh, solve this question now another one uh, i framed and this was uh, i was expecting uh, that kids will be a little smarterly uh, smarter and they will solve this but uh, completely opposite happened and uh, till now uh, i think only uh, five five students have uh, given the right answer and uh, almost 100 plus have given wrong answer in the group also discussion was going on the personal groups also and the telegram discussion group also so majority of the people have given wrong answer very few have given correct answer for this problem and it's very nice and once you'll see the solution you'll be very happy to see it and uh, definitely these kind of problems will improve your thought process right so let's start this uh, question uh, first part is when you look at this field it is like uh, alpha r vector alpha r vector so there are two methods first method is the best method uh, i feel and it was such a nice approach so uh, vector is alpha r vector okay so field is identical to the solid non-conducting sphere and we know that solid non-conducting sphere field is rho r by 3 epsilon naught. So r vector r vector we can uh, remove and from here we will get rho value uh, that is 3 epsilon naught alpha. Basically this is nothing but uh, this entire space is having a constant density of uh, rho naught. We can uh, use the differential form of Gauss theorem also in order to find this rho. But uh, the fun part is uh, here. Now many students uh, tried to solve it uh, by finding flux of this disk and they made a mistake in the sign integration all those things. But what my suggestion is since we are uh, treating it as a solid uh, non-conducting sphere in the entire space, this entire space till infinity we can say it is uh, solid sphere, field is radial field is radial uh, this is the direction of field and this is the direction of r vector as well and this cone surface if we draw this cone smartly then i can say directly area vector and these are perpendicular so through this part there will not be any flux i can directly say flux through this curved surface of cone and flux through this paraboloid this sum has to be charged inside by epsilon all right so you see phi which we have to calculate it is due to paraboloid phi cone curved surface and charge inside charge inside will be density by epsilon naught times volume of this cone plus volume of this paraboloid volume of the paraboloid is 1 by 2 pi r square h and uh, volume of the cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h this is standard result you must remember this and this is where basic maths comes into play and it is such a simple uh, question when you simplify this uh, you are getting 5 by 6 pi rho naught r square h by epsilon naught then you substitute the value of this rho naught into this and simplify you are going to get 5 by 2 alpha pi r square h this is going to be the answer for this problem this is the smart way of solving this question this is how i thought this problem and uh, another approach for this question can be uh, by calculating flux through the disk but here also there is a catch here also there is a catch so this phi plus phi through this circle uh, and that is equal to charge inside by epsilon naught one thing which you have to notice here so here i have written phi plus phi disk or uh, phi circle okay and that is q inside by epsilon naught so somehow if i can calculate this flux I know volume uh, is called volume charge density is constant. I know the volume also. I know inside the paraboloid how much charge is present. Then what we have to do is, but the problem is uh, at this point everywhere field is variable. So what I have to do is at a distance of r here, I'll take a differential ring. 
okay this r and uh, that r is uh, different but we survived okay i just realized we survived we are lucky okay so i'll call this as r star so this will become e dot da we are applying e da and this is r r star cos theta i'm calling it as h you can see here this small r so 2 pi r dr and cos theta e dot da we are applying and you see for a closed surface outward normal will be taken so on on this flux is going to be positive a paraboloid a disc so a disc is this side and uh, field is opposite side so this flux is negative so and you can see here also e and da vector it will come due to this closed part all right so let's say this angle is theta so e minus sign due to uh, obtuse angle then da is uh, then da is 2 pi r dr then cos theta now r, r star cos theta so this r star cos theta becomes h and this r dr is as it is so uh, even though i took this as r but uh, i hope you are able to realize that this becomes a constant and rho by 3 epsilon naught is alpha we already know this okay, then phi disk we can calculate 0 to capital r if you integrate you are getting minus phi rho naught r square by h 3 epsilon naught understood now i can write phi plus phi disk is equal to uh, rho times volume in, volume of the paraboloid by epsilon i hope it is clear to you let's substitute the value of this phi phi disk and uh, simplify this we are going to get the same answer again so your approach can be anything and this is slightly lengthy method this is smarter method this is how we should think in the exam and it physics is all about concept applications no matter how many formulas you mug up how many books you read till the time you take the pen paper and practice you learn these concepts, apply those concepts, understand the uh, you know very small small things about the concept. Physics will appear tough, and the day you learn these concepts, you will uh, learn how to uh, apply in different situation. You will get the true essence of uh, the concept. You will feel that your concepts are stronger. So I hope you have enjoyed these two problems and both the methods I have discussed and uh, i'll keep bringing more such problems uh, in near future so uh, like this video share this with others and uh, see you see you soon thank you thanks for watching this video